Oh, oh, there you are. Oh, nice. How do you like my binoculars? I was just trying out some different ways that you can see. And um, I definitely need my glasses so I can see to read your story. I have a story that Jesus tells about seeing and what happens if you can't see. Um, I can't imagine not being able to see. I love all the colors and I'd like to read and I'd like to see all of you. So it would not be a fun life to not be able to see. So let's find out what happens with the man that Jesus met. And this is uh, called Now I See, and it's from the book of John, chapter 9. And John is one of the four Gospels. One day, Jesus and his disciples were traveling through the city of Jerusalem. As they were walking, they passed by a blind man. One of the disciples turned to Jesus and he asked, Teacher, someone must have sinned to make this man blind. Was it him or his parents? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind. God made him that way so that he could be an example of the power of God. Who's there? The blind man asked, reaching in front of him. Jesus took the man's hands. My name is Jesus. Jesus knelt down in front of the man and picked up some dirt. Then he spit, he spit into the dirt and mixed it to make mud. He gently spread the mud onto the blind man's eyes. So there's when they first met the blind man. Hmm. Go to the pool of Solomon, Jesus told the blind man. Wash your eyes in the pool there. The blind man did not know who this Jesus was, but he could hear in Jesus' voice and feel in his touch that there was something special about this man. So the blind man obeyed. He made his way to the pool. Once there, he washed the mud off his eyes. Then... For the first time in his life, light and colors flooded his vision. He could see. Oh my goodness, how happy he must have been. And how exciting for all these people to witness a miracle like that. The once blind man was overjoyed. He walked around looking at everything as he went. He was amazed at all of the wonderful sights, the children smiling, the green trees swaying, the ripe fruits in the marketplace. There was so much to see. Local people knew of the blind man. So when they saw him laughing and looking around, they began to whisper. Isn't that the man who was blind, one person asked. Wasn't he a beggar, someone else asked. Some people replied, yes, that is him. But others answered, no, that is not him. It only looks like him. The man overheard people talking. He said, it is true. I was the blind man. You saw begging in the streets, but now I can see. The people looked at him in wonder. How, someone asked, how can you see now after all those years? The man answered, 
Jesus made some mud and rubbed it on my eyes. He told me to wash in the pool of Solemn. So I did. And after I washed, I could see. Where is this Jesus? The people asked. But the man did not know. Hmm. So some people thought this was amazing, and I think others didn't. Over the next few days, the man's story spread across the land. Powerful religious leaders known as the Pharisees heard about this miracle, and they heard that Jesus was being named as the one who had healed him. The Pharisees had heard of Jesus' miracles before. They had even heard people say that Jesus was God's son. But the Pharisees did not believe that this ordinary man could really have been sent from God. They wanted to find something wrong with Jesus. They wanted to prove that he was not godly and that he was an ordinary man. They also wanted everyone to stop talking about him. First, the Pharisees questioned the once blind man's parents. Is this your son, the one who you say was born blind? How can he see now? Hmm. Pharisees continue to try and trip up Jesus. And it looks like the parents are kind of scared of them. They are kind of like the law of the land, so they would be scary. His parents were afraid that what they said would get them in trouble, so they answered carefully. Well, we know that is our son, and we know that he was born blind, but we don't know how he got his sight or who gave it to him. Ask him. He's old enough to tell you what happened. Then the Pharisees turned to the once blind man. Honor God by telling the truth. Who healed you? It could not have been Jesus because Jesus is just an ordinary man. The man whom Jesus healed answered, whether he is ordinary or not, I do not know. I know one thing, I was blind and now I can see. The Pharisees said, we don't know who this man Jesus is or where he came from. How can a man do something so wonderful, so amazing, and yet you don't know where he came from, the man said. He healed me. Only God's power can do that. So there they are questioning the man, and the man believes. The once blind man believed that Jesus was sent from God, but the Pharisees still did not believe. And they knew that the man had been telling this story all over town. This made them really mad. The Pharisees threw the man out into the streets. So they kicked him out of their town. And he's telling the truth. What's going to happen? Jesus heard about how the Pharisees had treated the man, so Jesus went to go check on him. Are you okay? Jesus asked him. The man froze. He immediately recognized Jesus' voice. And for the first time, the man looked into the eyes of the person who had healed him. Jesus then said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? Please, Lord, tell me who he is so that I can believe in him. The man replied, You have seen him with your own eyes, Jesus said. It is the man who speaks to you now. 
So there's Jesus with the once blind man. Pretty amazing. The man fell to his knees and said, Lord, I believe. Jesus smiled. With one healing touch, he had brought one more person to believe in him. Even after all of Jesus' miracles, the Pharisees did not believe that Jesus was the Son of God. But with just one miracle, the blind man believed. <clears throat> So I think it's interesting that these Pharisees knew about all these miracles that Jesus was doing, but yet they refused to believe that Jesus was the Son of God. And then you have this one man who was able to see one miracle and he believed. So I think that's an amazing story, and I think how excited that man would have been. He must have been jumping and dancing and running all over town, and um, it said he saw the smiling faces of the children, and he saw the trees and all the colors of the rainbow. So that must have been very exciting for him. So, for our craft today, I have a couple of things. You saw me at the beginning of the hour with my binoculars, right? You can see things far away with binoculars. They come in pretty handy if you're trying to um, see an animal that's far away or maybe a bird that's up in a tree, um, something like that. Um, so I have promised that these binoculars will help you see far away, but they're pretty fun. Look at these. You just take two toilet paper tubes and you glue them together. And I punched holes on the back of each one so I can make a string because you want to be able to take them with you on your adventure. And then you can look and see who you can see. So that's very simple to do. And then I have another fun one. Let's see if I can do this. What do you think of my new glasses? Pretty fun, huh? I kind of like them. And the best part is you can eat them. So um, it's just uh, chenille stems. And first I put Fruit Loops. I chose Fruit Loops because Fruit Loops have all those colors in them. And I thought about the man in the story and how he could all, all of a sudden see all the colors of the rainbow. And so I put Fruit Loops on one and then I um, twisted it together down here on the end so I had a loop. Then I took the other chenille stem and I put a bunch of Fruit Loops on it and I threaded it through so it went through so they they hooked together like glasses and um i twisted it once so then they kind of stay together and don't slide and then when i got to the end i twisted them together and i put little hooks so they hook over my ears but those are kind of fun kind of cool and it's a snack too. Don't you love craft projects that are snacks? I think they're kind of fun. Okay, well, today is Wednesday and I am going to be gone on Friday. 
So I just wanted you to know that Miss Mindy is going to do story time again. We were so happy to have her a couple times earlier in the month. And she's going to do it a couple times more still this month. One of them being on Friday. So um, she will be here on Friday. I also want to remind all of you that we're having an outdoor worship service a week from today. And I hope you'll all come. Um, we're designing the worship service to be family friendly. And um, you get to sit on your um, lawn chairs in the parking lot. And we're going to have music. And um, Sammy Tierney, our youth director, is going to give the sermon. I'm going to do a children's time. We've got sidewalk chalk for you. And there's free ice cream. So make sure you get your parents to sign up for the worship service. And I will see you on Monday. And let's bow our heads for prayer. Good and gracious God, thank you for helping us to see you, for showing us beautiful things like a rainbow or a squirrel or a deer in a meadow. And um, thank you for the love and the forgiveness that you give us, because that also helps us to see you. And I ask your blessing on all of my Messiah friends, as I always do, because I want them to stay safe and in your loving care. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. I will see you on next Monday. Bye.